Hello everyone, welcome to the second video in the series about jazz guitar player Mark Whitfield. And this time we're going to look at his amazing and super cool chord solo on a F minor blues. Coming right up. I transcribed this chord solo from the recording of Eye of the Hurricane, which is a minor blues uh, composed by Herbie Hancock, uh, recorded on the album called Finger Painting. And uh, Mark Whitfield plays an amazing solo on this album. And in, in the first episode of this series, I showed you some of the licks. But in this episode, I just want to show you the whole chord solo. I'm not gonna, we're not gonna do like a little fragments. I'm just gonna show you the whole chord solo. Uh, walk you through it, uh, maybe explain some of the concepts, and um, yeah, you can see me uh, practice a little bit because I just transcribed it like an hour ago, and um, I'm not capable of playing it at full speed. But what I did instead is I recorded a backing track at uh, 200 BPM. Uh, I just uploaded it on my YouTube channel. There's a link to that backing track in the description because the original is I think 220 which is 20 uh, beats faster, but uh, that is very fast to play all these chords. And it sounds great at 200 as well. So let's just get started. It's two courses, so um, 24 bars. And I'm just gonna walk, uh, through, walk you through it uh, uh, four bars at a time. So let me get the tab for you. Oh, this is the second course. Yeah. So let me just play the first four bars and then I'll play that once with the backing track and then um, we can talk about it. One, two, one, two, three, four. <laughs> track so it's just a um, he's basically just playing F minor but with some really cool forcing so this first forcing is really nice it, it features both the, the 13 um, this is an 11 in it but it's just a cool voicing for F minor 7 it's very funky So something to remember and it's easy to find because my first finger is actually on the root. And then he goes to this voicing, which is really just F minor 7, but because uh, the E flat and the F are close together, it has a certain sound. So the blues goes to B flat minor and he just plays a standard B flat minor uh, voicing and he he, play, he goes into it with a chromatic, like A minor, B flat minor, but I just think about B flat minor and then... Right? So let's go to the next four bars. So <laughs> these four bars are pretty difficult because this rhythm that he plays... Let me play the rhythm first. The rhythm sounds like this. One, two, three, four, ah. Uh. Right? It's not that difficult, but with all the chord uh, voicings and the changes, it makes it pretty hard uh, to have a good coordination between the hands. Let me first once play it slowly, and then um, I'll play it with back and track. One, two, three. <laughs> I play the fourth beat uh, of the previous bar before it. One, two, one, two, three. Pretty challenging. So let me play it with the backing track. So including the first four bars. Of course, I gotta remember the first four bars. The rhythm is the most important thing. Yeah, I'm gonna play something like that. I'm not sure if I would com uh, remember the rhythm completely, but I will play the same four things. That was 
sounds pretty okay. One more time, we get the sound in our ears. So um, if you go even faster, it's also just a matter of doing the best you can. Um, it sounds amazing on the original recording, but not every chord uh, in the original recording is also clean, right? Most of them are, but it's more about the attitude, right? Um, the amazing thing about these, uh, the way that Mark Whitfield plays his chord solo is the attitude with which he, with which he plays it and the groove. And of course, that, that, that pushing bass line that Christopher Bright plays under it. So just look it up on YouTube. It's called Eye of the Hurricane. Uh, maybe I'll put a link in the description if I don't forget. Um, so what's happening here? So first he plays B flat minor, shifting up to C minor. That's something that you can do on the minor chord, right? It's something typical. Goes to this B flat sus chord. C7 altered to go back to F minor. It's not part of the chord progression, but that's of course, you can always do that. You can always doesn't matter if you play a single line of chords, you can always play something that goes into the next chord. So in this case, you play C7 altered. He goes to the squad voicing of F minor. And then he just starts messing around with the squad voicing. Right, just moving it around, uh, chromatically up, whole step down. Um, I'm not sure if there's a, a method behind it. It's just, you can shift the chords around and just see if that works and it's also a matter of experimenting and then he ends on this a flat minor because the next chord is going to be d flat seven right and then c seven so instead of playing d flat seven he's playing a flat minor so he's, he's putting a two in front of that five it doesn't really matter if you understand that the first step is to just practice it and get the sound in your ears and then later on you could think about it but Every time you have a five chord, you can always play a two before. So if you have G7, for example, you can always play D minor before it. Right? That's the theory behind it. So again, slowly. C7. Now we're at the final four bars of the first chorus. Bar 9 to 12. So we're on this A flat, and then he plays... Three, four, one. Uh, pretty amazing, actually. Um, I would never think to do this, especially the last chord. I'll get to it. So, first it's just D flat seven. Let me first play it with a backing track. Let me play it one more time. Three, four, one. remember everything so here we go pretty challenging especially to keep the timing solid so let, let me do it one more time maybe put the backing track a little bit louder so I can hear it a little bit better also It's important to accent that last uh, chord always. Because if you don't do that, it starts sounding weird, comical almost, right? And it's difficult to do because it's just physically exhausting to play <laughs> that rhythm all the time and also move your left hand to all those chords. But um, that's just a matter of practicing for everyone, including me. And Mark Whitfield, I bet he practiced this a lot, this kind of uh, rhythmic patterns that probably come from originally from uh, Wes Montgomery who did it with his thumb of course it's a, it's a, that's a different feel but with a pick I think it sounds even cooler would, but I'm of course uh, predestined to like a pick because right? I play with a pick now we're going to the second chorus which is a little bit easier 
Uh, oh, we have to talk, of course, about what's happening in the last four bars. Right, so um, A flat minor to D flat seven, right, and then it's just C seven to F sharp seven, which is the tritone substitute for C seven. So instead of playing A flat minor, D flat seven, G minor seven, C seven, he plays A flat seven, D flat seven, G minor seven, F sharp seven. And then he goes to A minor, A flat minor, so instead of resolving to F minor, he just plays kind of a turnaround. So let's say you have D, D flat, C7, and then he would have to go to F minor and just do... Kind of a turnaround. Instead of resolving to the 1, uh, you resolve to the 3. That's what he does here. But instead of going to C7, he plays... Which is... What is it actually? It um, would be F sharp minor major seven, right? This would be F sharp minor. And this is the major seven. Right, it's a, I would never think to play that chord, but it resolves very nicely to F minor because it's just a chromatic approach note. So that's what he does. So now I have to play it again, of course, so we can listen to it one more time. Super cool. And then second chorus, a little bit easier. And it has uh, what I call the big quarters, big quarter notes. And Rick Mark Woodward is very good in playing those big quarter notes, which means that you play chords right on the beat and you give them extra emphasis. Um, so it sounds like this, the first four bars. One, two, three, four. <laughs> One, two, three, four. Mm. So B, um, B flat sus, right, or F minor 11. And now uh, come two chords on the beat, right? And they, I call them big quarter notes. They are swinging quarter notes. They're flat on the beat, and it's very important to play them exactly on the beat. Don't play them slightly off beat, but really on the beat. And you gotta love it. One, two, three, four. Mm. Um, theoretically, B flat seven. So he, he just he goes from B flat sus to B flat seven, or because it's F in the bass, he goes from F eleven to F um, with a th with a thirteen, right? From the seven to the six f minor six you could say f minus six thirteen and then um it goes again to b flat minor now if you don't if you can remember this the, the thing to remember is that if you have a minor chord you can always play voicings on top of that that belong to the five chord that goes along with it so f minor goes along with b flat seven so you can play voicings that go well with b flat seven all the, those voicings would work Right, the next four bars sound like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. So to start with the end, it ha again has these big quarter notes. And it's just a, a forcing for B flat sus. And it's something that I would never actually think to play on F minor, just this kind of pop, right? But it sounds great uh, on F minor, it just has this kind of undefined sound. And before he plays this forcing for B flat minor seven, it's tricky to play. Some people try like, like to play it like this, but that's very difficult to uh, grab fast. So I play it like this, and then it goes to this one. It's also pretty tricky. But you could play like this, but that's hard to do um, on the high frets. And um, on the original recording, this chord is not really sounding sounding muted. So I'm guessing he's playing it like this and just missing some strings. So I, I like to play it like that, which is also not very easy. It's another voicing for B flat. 
uh, minor seven, and um, then we go to again. It does C seven altered to go back to F seven. One, two, three. So let's play the first eight bars with the backing track. Let me see if I remember the rhythm. Pa, 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 ta, ki, ki. Well, maybe I don't remember it, but um, I'll try, I'll try. Almost, I think. Maybe one, one thing I did wrong. Let me see again. Oh, yeah. Okay. So to play this well, it's just playing it over and over and over again. So and then at one point it will just all flow naturally because it will make sense. In the beginning it's just finding every chord and remembering the rhythms. It can be complicated. Final four bars, they're pretty easy. So let me just play that. One, two, one, two, three, four. Just D flat seven, sharp nine, to C seven, uh, sharp nine, and then this octave. But it's still cool. One, two, three, four. Mm. Uh, the rhythm mix is cool, right? The first two bars, they start on the end of one, one, two, three, four, one, and then on the beat. Um, let me play the complete second chorus. That's the whole thing. So, do I dare play the whole thing? Can I play the whole thing? Um, let me try. So, It's okay, can be better. So we can all start practicing it now and then next week it will be great. So what can you do with this? Well, I would study the, the separate voicings. I would study that rhythm and see what else you can do with that rhythm because that rhythm will sound great on anything you do. Let's say you have a, a 251 like... Um, it's 251 to G, right? One, two, three, four. I'll play with the rhythm. One, two, three, four. Stuff like that. And um, yeah. But go listen also to the original because um, you gotta hear how Mark Whitfield is playing this with, with that with that big groove and the, the attitude. It's great. My next video will be for Patreon only, and uh, we're gonna dive into some 251s by Mark Whitfield. Um, if you're interested in that, Go to my Patreon, uh, there you can also download the tabs for this video, for um, a lot of other videos, and you will get access to a bunch of other exclusive videos, especially for Patreon. And uh, as always, please, if you like the video, like and subscribe, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye!